Good morning and welcome back to my 2023 Tour Divide coverage. This is day six and things are starting to get a little bit interesting at the front of the race. So today I'm going to focus predominantly on the um, you know, the head of affairs um, because we've had some quite interesting things happening. So uh, yesterday when I left it, we, you may remember that, um, that basically the, the early leaders, Justinus and Ulrich, had been joined by Jens who'd kind of gradually chased them down over the course of the first um, you know, five or so days. Um, so as of last night, so 2 a.m., the three of them were all together, so Jens, Auric, and Justinus, um, they made it past Max in, um, and I think there's a, just a little, um, I think they all stayed together. They must have found some um, accommodation at Island Park. I'm not 100% sure, or certainly some shelter. So they were all there together, um, and you know, at one point their trackers were all, all, all there. Um, and then we had kind of like a, a second group as such, who were all in Lima. So I think that's kind of setting a fairly strong pattern for the front of the race now. Um, obviously we've got our three leaders who are all vying for position. And then the second pack, we've got Leo, uh, Stephen Herrick, Caleb, um, who else was in there? Um, Ezra, um, Joe Nation, um, and, and all these kind of people. So, I mean, they're not out of it, but by this point, it's um, that's quite, quite a gap to close um, and something would would probably either these guys would have to have a very strong ride to get themselves back into contention or there would have to be an issue um, going forward but this is the Tour Divide and this next sec section I feel is a, uh, a very key section of the race um, so let's have a little refresh and see what's happened because like I said, it is a key section. Um, so when I've run this the race 2019, I had a big wobble at Lima. I stayed quite quite a long time in um, in Lima. I got a hotel there, um, and last year this is where my kind of I, I, I essentially scratched last year, and I I had sort of started to get some health problems in um, in Lima, um, breathing difficulties and kind of like pains in my back and and, and things like that, which which then kind of came to haunt me on on this section. So um, you go down the rail trail. We discussed that yesterday in the the route kind of analysis, and then you've got this climb up and over here. Um, I can't remember what it's actually called, uh, but you head down to Flag Ranch. It's it's an interesting climb. There's a load of road here, and then you you go up into the woods, and it's quite kind of closed in with trees. Uh, 2019, there was a tiny, tiny bit of snow, like maybe 20 meters worth of walking at the top. Uh, last year, there was quite a lot of snow You're on and off the bike. It was a very heavy surface um, and it got really cold. This is where my, you know, I really started to struggle. Um, and then there's a key resupply at Flag Ranch. So we've, we've had some interesting um, developments. You may see now that the front here, it's all split up. So we're 2.20 local time now. Um, and yeah, I mean, like I said, it's all split up. So Justinus actually had some problems. He's lost about six hours on Jens, who is now leading, and Ulrich, who's dropped off a little bit. So let's just let's just go and see, um, hear from Justinus, and find out what actually happened. Um, like last night, um, I think basically he had some some problems with his bike. There was, uh, he had, and like I think he had to single speed it, um, and then get down to, um, I think he had to get to Jackson in the end. So he's had a bit of a torrid time of it. Um, sorry, I'm just finding my video now. Um, here we go, let's hear from you, Steve. Uh, back riding, and I'm ready for the long shift now because I'm a bit behind the schedule. Oh, what happened? Electronics and water doesn't go together alone. And that's probably what happened. My, like everything, the SRAM batteries, they were not taking charge. They were not giving anything to the derailleur. derailleur, derailleur. So at the end, I had to, yeah, first made the a single speed one which I carried for a while, then the chain snapped, then I had a push bike until Flag Ranch, 
and there I spent some time drying stuff out, trying various cables, nothing worked. Got myself a lift to Jackson, <coughs> there I got new batteries, new charger, and I had this pitch. So I'm back on track. So yeah, so big problems for Eustinus. Um Sounds like he's basically managed to um, kill the batteries on his Axis SRAM Axis. So for those of you who don't you don't know, that's um, that's a wireless electronic shifting. Um, it's great when it works, um, but then when it doesn't work, it's quite tricky. I mean, he's lucky that he managed to get to Jackson. Um, so Jackson is, if we look in on the map here, I believe it's at this junction here. Um, T yeah, yeah. So this is so I ended up in Jackson after I scratched last year. So it was about an hour and a half ride from this junction. Um, so yeah, he's obviously hitched the lift to Jackson, sorted himself out, and gone back to Flag Ranch again. Um, that's within the rules. You can leave the course, um, but you have to restart from from that point. Um, so yeah, he's, he's lucky really. Um, but he's lost about six hours on Yens, um, and probably probably half that on Ulrich now, who looks like he's stopped. Um, but I mean, they're lucky. He's lucky he did it there. To, he was able to get to Jackson because there's two big, big passes: uh, Union Pass and Togwati Pass. Sorry, the, it's the other way around: Togwati and then Union. Um, I'll come into that shortly when I when I do the route analysis. Um, so yeah, um, and it looks like Jens is is making his move. So let's let's have a little bit of a look at the race flow, um, see what's happened there. So yeah, they've kind of been riding together. Maybe Jens was slightly ahead over Union Pass. Um, Union Pass is a, it's not my favorite pass. It's a bit of a drag, as you'll see when we look at the elevation charts shortly. Justine has had this long stop here. I suspect he's going to ride through the night. I can't see that he wouldn't. I reckon he might close that gap quite substantially. Um, and yeah, Jens is, Jens is gunning for it. I wonder if he's going to ride through the night and do an all-nighter and try and get a big gap. Um, he is up on sleep, so maybe he has, he has the... Um, capacity to um you know push it a little bit um look at the run versus the rest yens is still fastest 10.8 moving speed um the only person that's matched him is joe nation uh but again we've discussed he's he he's been stopping a lot more so 73.4 percent stop time versus uh, 83 for yens auric still stopped the least 85.9 percent Justinus' uh, average moving speed is 10.7 miles an hour, though, which, considering he rode single speed and had to walk quite a bit, that would have made a, quite a, an indentation into his average speed. Um, so he might well, he might be able to close that that gap on the ends, but um, yeah, but it's going to be interesting to see um, how it goes. Um, and then if you look back, these guys, you know, they they are they're a fair bit slower. Um, they're just stopping more. Um, you know, and if you get consistent, you go faster. I mean, look at look at Lael, eight two point six percent stop time. She's super efficient. Uh, doesn't ride as fast, but efficiency counts, and you can make up a lot of time. Um, even if you're moving, you know, even if you're walking, um, that's still faster than standing still. So, you know, it, it really does make a difference. Um, so yeah, so this is, in my opinion, a key point of the race. From my own personal perspective, I had a big wobble in Lima, and then last year ended up scratching on, well, just after Togwati Pass uh, at, um, there's a lodge, Lava Mountain Lodge the other side. Um, it's it's almost a week in now, just under halfway. Uh, halfway is in the middle of the Great Basin. We'll, we'll probably be looking at that tomorrow, so I won't go into too many details now. Uh, and yeah, this is where the little the little niggles start to come to play. So Joe Nation, we heard, had um, a, a bit of a sore leg, so he's he's had to back it off. You know, Eustine has had his bike problems, uh, you know, a week a week of wet weather, and his electronics are playing up, unsurprising. Ulrich's dropped off the pace a little bit, but we know he was pushing it hard early on. And then Jens is, is ridden through. I do suspect that Eustine is probably going to be in a better situation now. Um, he's got a bit of pace. He's got a carrot in front of him. And... Um, you know he's he's going to ride at his own pace now. Not not riding with these guys chasing each other and leapfrogging, which is probably better in the grand scheme of things, especially into this second half of the race. Jens is um, doing his thing, and Ulrich. Well, we know he was pushing hard early on. Is it going to catch up with him? Um, maybe this is it catching up with him. I, I suspect Ulrich is going to get better when it gets warmer and drier. Uh, he's based in Spain. Um, like I said, he's he's not necessarily as as experienced off road. And it does get, 
you know, when the trails are dry, you know, I touched on yesterday, maybe Jens was better in the wet and more experienced riding off road in mud generally. Um, so maybe he would have had that advantage. I suspect Ulrich, you know, he's, he's not out of it by a long way. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he, he motors in this latter section. Um, you know, it's, it's still all to play for. Any of these three can take it. You could even see one of the guys in the back. If Joe Nation starts skipping a few nights sleep or, um, you know, cutting down and getting into it and like really pushing in the latter half, he could close up as well, um, as could any of those guys in that back group. So, yeah, fascinating to to, to see over the next week or so. Um, before I go any further, I'll just say thanks to Holy Fat because again they're supporting me and helping me do this um, and it's very much appreciated so yeah check out the website all the links and stuff is below in the description um, they make uh, energy bars um, they're low carb but high fats and stuff I've been using them in my rides um, so yeah worth looking at there's a there's a little discount code in there as well if that's something that's of interest to you so thanks to those guys um, let's go across to ride with GPS. Before I go there, I've been using um, Sarah Swallow's excellent Tour Divide guide on ride with GPS for my route analysis. And um, she put up a post the other day, um, and I just really liked her photos. It's a really nice style. Um, I think she's uh, it sounds like she's kind of taking it steady, not necessarily racing it, but just trying to ride her own pace and not get sucked into it and, and enjoy it. Um, but yeah, like. These, these photos are just really nice. Um, so yeah, maybe give her a little look on uh, on Instagram. These look like they're predominantly Canada in the first part of Montana. Um, so yeah, hopefully she posts some more. Um, that'd be really cool to see. Uh, which leads me nicely on to Riber GPS. Um, so Riber GPS, um, I've actually, so Sarah Swallow's got a collection of the route. Um, I was using the whole route, but a few of you have said you'd rather see uh, smaller sections so that, that the profile is a bit clearer. So I've listened and I've done that. And this is the section that the, the leaders are on at the moment. Uh, so I'm just gonna move points of interest out the way so we can get a clearer look at the map. And we'll, we'll dig into the, to the route a little bit. So starting at, um, well, it's not quite Flag Ranch. Um, Flag Ranch, I believe, is about here. So this is the, the pass up and over. And then there's quite a bit of road here before you get to Togwati. There's a nice little um, gas station here. I stopped there for a coffee and stuff last year when I was feeling quite sorry for myself. Um, but that is a really beautiful road. Um, so that is where I'm pretty sure Justine has shot his video that we watched just now. When I was there in 2019, um, I got there at sunset. It was just incredible. Um, my video skills are a lot better now, as are my GoPros. <laughs> Uh, they're a lot less shaky but yeah i got there golden hour sunset tetons in the background um just just really beautiful um pretty special that's that's what happens on, on the divide you you end up in amazing places that you probably would never have traveled to before at amazing times um of the day so that is that i think that was shot on this section of the road here and you can see across the lake there's there's those mountains um and then yeah you're on the road for quite a while and then this is the start of Togwati Pass. Incidentally, the um, the Trans Am, which is is the coast to coast road version, I guess, of Tour Divide. It goes east to west across. That 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 route intersects briefly here on Togwati Pass. So there is a fair chance that some of the riders might see each other. I I saw a rider last year um, on that road section, um, but we don't we don't follow the whole or they don't follow the whole road. So they turn off onto this back road around here um it's just kind of rolling before you you start the main kind of climb up togwati um and as you can see on the little video um i can show you what it is like so the dirt road at the bottom is, is fairly easy rolling um you know it's well driven there's i think there's a ranch down there and it's the forest service, service use it quite quite a lot so it's, it's quite easy rolling quite steep you are getting quite high now so togwati i think it's just under three thousand meters um, so if we look at the map it will tell us um, nine basically 9,500 feet um, yeah it's about it's just under 3,000 I believe my my conversion skills aren't quite um, aren't quite quick enough to, to do it live um, so you're, you're climbing up and then you basically intersect the road again and there is a little gas station and the lodge up here so 2019 
I slept. Um, I think I slept by the, ga the gas station in um, in Coulter Bay, and I ended up catching Leo um, and Evan Deutsch on the road section. They stayed up here, so um, yeah, you're, you're you're getting high here, and it's it's pretty cool. There's some pretty nice mountains around you. Um, so this is the road. Um, so but yeah, a nice wide pass. Nothing kind of um, you know. It's, it's not too busy some pretty cool views up there again my laptop's struggling a bit i've got a new one on order so hopefully these things will improve um and yeah this was probably five or six in the morning and yeah just kind of cruise up there on the hard shoulder and then when you get to the top you can see you just pretty much get to the top on the road and then you turn off it's the classic it can be the classic road climb up you think it's all going good and then you can end up hike biking down so this is quite sheltered um I've ridden down this twice. So 2019, we got there nice and early in the morning, and there was there were quite a few snowbanks. Um, so we're a little bit on and off the the bike, but I was actually um, I was actually able to ride quite a lot of it. Um, so let me let me find that for you. Um, so yeah, I was obviously with Leo and Evan here, um, and you're just on and off. And early in the morning, when the sun's not gone to the, the snow melt, the, the, the snow so much, it's actually quite hard. So this is worth bearing in mind. It's applicable for quite a lot of passes and sometimes mud as well. When it's really cold and you're up high, the the mud can be a lot firmer. You can just ride it. The same goes with the snow. I think eventually I ended up figuring out I can ride these banks. But yeah, you know, when the sun had been on all day, it just gets soft and together, slushy. And so I, last year, yeah, 2022, I, I was having a real bad time of it on this pass. It was too much less peanut my butter, Hershey's like soft snow. The, uh, the, um, the I had a chest sorry. infection uh -huh. at the same time and <laughs> getting up to 3,000 metres yeah. and struggling to breathe. And then, um, uh, I just stopped for a half so yeah, it's, it's uh, mixed, the mixed memories for me, this particular pass. But that's kind of what the riders are dealing with. It can be a bit yeah, of a mental struggle because you think you climb up the road, you can free wheel down the other side and then you end up pushing. Um, but that's that's what it's like on the Tour Divide. Sometimes you push downhill and you ride uphill. Other times you ride uphill, uh, you push uphill and you ride downhill. Sometimes you just push your bike over both when it's really bad, as was the case last year in Canada. Um, so yeah, you, you go up there, then you, you're back on the road again. Um, it's a bit long-winded, um, but you're off that highway. Uh, there's Lava Mountain Lodge down here. So this is, uh, that's where I ended up scratching last year. Um, but this, you may notice that, so all the, all the leaders are in front of Mike's record dot at the moment. Um, however, Mike did actually, when he set that record, he stayed in the in the lodge, in Lava Mountain Lodge. Um, I know that because we had a really nice discussion uh, uh, with, with the owners last year. They were telling me about him. Um, it's kind of, kind of nice to, to, to remember Mike a little bit and, and talk about stories. Um, and he was saying he, they got, he got there at 11, had quite a big sleep had a shower and stuff, stayed in the lodge, had a big meal and, and a good resupply and then pushed on. So at the moment, the leaders are quite, well, not not massively ahead, but a, a fair bit ahead of um, of Mike's dot. So they're up Union Pass at the moment. I suspect tomorrow when we look at it, um, he might well have closed that again. And I'm pretty sure that Mike skipped a night's sleep riding through the basin. So I think at the moment it looks like they're well ahead pace, but that may well close itself down. Um, you know as it progresses so and i know mike really pushed the sleep in the second half of the race so it's going to be interesting to keep a view on that um after togwati uh you can see here down on the road on the uh, so the, the the checkered surface here is off-road and the solid is 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 road or tarmac it's just a nice way to differ differentiate the um the surface type so you end up climbing up union pass um it's a bit of a bugger to be honest it's um there's a lot of road and then at the top it, it kind of goes into um kind of a bit like lava mountain four driver track when i did it in 2019 i was a bit on and off the bike it was a bit of snow up there and then you think you're getting over the top and then it just kind of drags and drags and drags i think i blew on the descent because i thought i was just going to free wheel down into pine dale and it'll be rosy but it, it really does drag and <clears throat> and there's quite a bit of snow in 20 2019 too so let me let me just get a little video of the top of Union Pass. Um, that's not Union Pass, that is the road to Pinedale. Um, I've managed to mislabel things. Um, 
that is top of Union Pass in 2019, so you're really high up. And this is, uh, you know, you, you feel like you're in the big mountains here. This was a, this is the first time I've sort of been in that kind of location in 2019. So it was pretty pretty cool for me. Um, but yeah, like I say, it's, it, was, it was a drag across that top there. So that's, it looks like that's where Eustinus is at the moment. Um, it's gonna be a long night for Eustinus. He doesn't really wanna stop up there. It's gonna be quite cold. And then you drop down and you hit the road. And I think I'm pretty certain that Ulrich has camped somewhere at the bottom where we hit the road. There is a little, um, oh, there's the fire station and there is a small um, like bar where I got some food along with Evan in, in 2019. So I suspect that Ulrich's found some kind of shelter there, whether it's in the fire station or on the veranda of the bar or a public toilet or something like that. Uh, and Jens have obviously just carried on into the night. Um, so yeah, that's, that is that section. The next section is the Great Basin. I think I'll cover that tomorrow because I'm starting to ramble a little bit. Um, but I'll just finish up with a couple of stories. So we spoke about Ted King yesterday. He was really suffering. Um, and it sounds like he has decided to scratch officially. A, a quick video. update from here, still in Montana. Um, I'm still not looking my normal self. Um, to cut straight to the chase, I am a scratch effective immediately from Tour Divide. So yeah, I won't, I won't play the full video, um, but yeah, Ted King has scratched. It's a shame. Um, it was always going to be interesting to see how these guys with a pro background would, would fare in Tour Divide. Um, he was by far the fastest guy on course. Um, but yeah, it's just his, his body has is, is struggled and he's, um, he's ended up in hospital and quite rightly, I think, decided to scratch and put his health first. Um, the divide's always going to be there. Well, hopefully. Um, but health comes first sometimes. So yeah. I've been there, I've scratched the divide. Uh, I know how he feels, it's not a great feeling. But I think he'll be glad of it when he gets home um, and gets recovered. Um, I, we should have a, a John and Amira the dog update because I've not spoken about them for a couple of days. Uh, Bikepacking.com, um, they've got this really cool article about John and Mira um, and you know the bike they're using. So that's, that's really cool, definitely worth a little look. Um, so yeah, head over to bikepacking.com to check that out. Um, I'll probably do some a bike check video in the next day or so maybe even later today so i'll, I'll dig into to that setup there because it looks really nice and it's quite interesting um so i'll go into some details along with some details about some of the leaders bikes and a few other key bikes that that i that have kind of caught my eye in the race i also have my q a video from yesterday um i've been answering your questions in the comments so keep them coming along i might do another one next week um but have a have a look at that i'll put the link below um Let's just find John and Mira on the on the map if it works. Where are they? They're highlighted somewhere. Here we go. Mira, they are. Uh, they've gone through Lincoln, so they're they're making good progress through Montana. Um, so yeah, good on them for for keeping going. And uh, yeah, check out that little article. Uh, and finally, I just picked this up. So we talked about that second great chase group. This is from Leo's Instagram. Coming in to Lima with Steven and Caleb. Woo! Just rolling yeah. into Lima. Um, and then it looks like they all kind of start. Looking good. good Looking fresh. Yeah. How you doing, Caleb? Oh, yeah. So there we go. Nice to have a bit of company on the trail sometimes um, as the race progresses. So, yeah, so that is um, all I've got today. Bit of a, a leader's heavy version but i think there was plenty to talk about um i'll be back tomorrow morning for another update so yeah i hope you've enjoyed it um just if you if you're watching this and you've not subscribed then maybe consider doing that so you don't miss anything and yeah thanks for thanks for the support and i'll uh, i'll see you tomorrow